So you've set up the Nutanix database service in your environment, and now you want to manage some existing servers and you're unsure where to get started? Well, this is the video for you. Welcome to Tech Bytes. My name is David Teague, technical marketing engineer at Nutanix. And in this database solution series video number five, we're gonna register an existing database with NDB and show you how straightforward the process is. The steps are similar no matter which database you are using, and we're gonna register a Microsoft SQL Server database, an Oracle database, and a Postgres SQL database. Let's get started. From the NDB dashboard, we're gonna choose databases from the drop-down menu. On the overview page, you would see any databases that are registered. But since we're using the NDB environment from our previous solution series video, there are no databases registered. We're then going to click on Sources and select SQL Server Database. We can register AG databases and FCI clusters as well, but we're going to choose a single instance database. On the next screen, we will choose Not Registered. You can just register the database server if you were just onboarding that server to create a software profile, which we'll talk about in a later video. But I want to manage the database on that server as well, so I'm going to choose Not Registered. In the IP address or name of the VM, we're going to find our database VM in the dropdown and choose it. We can put a description here if we like, and then we're going to need a username and password that has administrator access. When the name and password are filled out correctly, you can then choose the Microsoft SQL instance. If you need to, you can change the Windows admin username and then select Next. On the next screen, we're going to select one database with one time machine. If you have an application that uses multiple databases, you can use the group option. We're then going to click our database name under the Unregistered Database section and choose a database name in NDB. We can also set a description if we want to and then click Next. On the next screen, we're going to set the Time Machine option. If this database server's logs were being backed up by another application, you could select that option and NDB will do copy-only backups of the database. Next, we're going to select our SLA. We've not created any custom SLA yet, so we're going to select the default SLA of Gold, which has continuous protection and then choose Register. From this screen, we're going to click up at the top to take you to the Operations page so you can see the progress of the registration. Employing a little time warp, we can see that the registration took about six minutes. And if we go back to the Databases page, we can see that the database is registered. So let's move on to registering our next database. And the process is very similar to what we just did. We're going to choose Register from the Sources page and then select Oracle. You can register existing RAT clusters, but we're going to choose Standalone for the video. Just like we did with SQL Server, we're going to select the server from the drop-down. But we're also going to need to fill out the Oracle database home path. You also have to create a user for NDB to use that has access to the server, and if you are using it, the grid infrastructure home. You also need to provide a password or public key of the NDB drive user you choose. Then choose Next. We're now going to fill out the name we would like for the database to have an NDB on this page, as well as the Oracle SID for the database. We can fill out the description if we like, and then click on Next. From here, the steps are the same as the previous database we added, so we're going to skip ahead to the Databases page and add our next database engine. We're now going to register a Postgres SQL database. You may wonder why I'm going to register a Postgres SQL database instead of using the one that's included with NDB. The included version is running on CentOS 7, and I have Red Hat in this environment, and it's also running Postgres SQL 13, where the included version at the time of this video is running Postgres SQL 10.4. And once we go to register and choose Postgres SQL, the process is very similar to the other Linux databases and the Oracle and SQL databases we did before. I'm gonna select the VM from the dropdown, provide the NDB drive user, the Postgres home or the PG home, and either the password or SSH public key for the NDB drive user and choose next. On the next screen, we're gonna set the name of the database in NDB, the port if it's different from the default shown here, and the Postgres user password. Then we would fill out our database instance on the server and click Next. From here, the steps are the same as the other databases, so we're gonna go see what it looks like after all the databases have been added. If we go back to the database overview screen, we can see the databases are registered. If we click into the Oracle database, we can go into the details page and see the information about the database. We can also do the same for the Postgres SQL database and see its information. I realized that I had the Postgres database name wrong when I was registering the server, so I went back and corrected it so that the database would register correctly. So that completes our task for today. We have three different database engines on three different operating systems registered in our fresh NDB environment. Later on in a different video, we're going to use these to create software profiles for provisioning and patching. In our next database solution series video, we will dive into some of the admin features. Click below to see the previous solution series video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.